Gotcha. Uh, okay, uh, this is Angela Bruner. She coaches at Lasseter. Um, third year or second year? Second. second year. She coached at Centennial before that. She's from Maryland, went to South River. Mm -hmm. um, so she's bringing all that knowledge here. It's wonderful. Um, and she will talk about positive coaching. We need more positive coaching. Great. Hello, everybody. Like she said, um, my name is Angela Bruner. This is my second year te teaching and coaching at Lasseter. Um, prior to that, I was at Centennial for five years. Um, and while I was at Centennial, I helped rebuild a junior program. I took the team from a very losing record the first year that I got there to my last year we were 17 one and one. Um, so for those of you out there that are rebuilding a program or starting a program, I've been there and I know how challenging it can be. So I also know how important it is to establish good relationships with the people that you coach, the organization that you represent, and the community that can make or break your success when you're building a program. Um, if you have any questions, my email is pretty easy. It's lasseterlax at gmail.com. Um, my mission is always to spread the game. Every mentor that I've had has been willing to constantly share information with me, give me drills, share their offenses with me, share their defenses with me. And um, where I grew up, it was one big family. Um, everybody knows everybody in, in the lacrosse world. It's still such a small world. And um, being able to share knowledge, not recreate the wheel, just like for those of you that are teachers. Um, there's so many great resources out there. And I love to share my knowledge that I have um, with anybody that wants to. Um, so, <clears throat> I kind of put together um, from all my different mentors and experiences and all the books that I've read, kind of my own way to be a positive, effective, and winning coach. Um, first and foremost is to create a set of core values for your program. And I'll talk about a way that we do it. Second is to create a culture of excellence. Okay? set expectations, and create that culture. The third step is to build your coaching philosophy. And that may take time and years for you to put together. If you're a first year coach, you want to have a coaching philosophy, but it's going to evolve. Okay, I'm constantly adding things, I'm constantly picking up ideas from other coaches. Um, and then finally, it's to empower the people around you. Okay? The first people you want to focus on, obviously, is your team. Okay? You want to empower them with resources. The game is evolving every year. It's changing. It's getting faster, and it's just growing tremendously, and you have to keep up with all of the changes. Um, but motivating them, bringing them together, getting them obsessed with each other, obsessed with the program, um, and I'll go over some things that, that we do that I've, I've found to be successful that the girls really enjoy doing. Um, and setting player contracts with your expectations for success. The next is how you choose your captains. This is very important when you're building a program and you are working at an established program. You have to put the right leaders in those roles. Um, next is your parents. Your parents can be the greatest asset you have, or they can sabotage your program. And so it's important that you empower your parents as well and provide them with your expectations so that they can be on board and support you and reiterate what you're emphasizing at home and off the field. And then finally, your coaches. 
for me, I won't bring a coach onto my staff just to have a warm body, okay, just to have an extra person. When I was at Centennial, I coached the varsity and the JV combined for three years. I ran varsity and JV together. And I did that because I didn't trust anybody else to run a JV practice without me around. Um, eventually, I grew a great coaching staff um, there, and my assistant coach at the time is now the head coach, and she's a wonderful coach. Um, so, but your coaches have to share the core values that you share. So when you bring a coach on, you have to say, this is our culture. These are my core values. Are you willing to accept these and um, you know, exude these when you're out in public or when you're working with the kids? So um, it's also important that you include your, all of your youth coaches as well and reach out to them as much as you can. Make sure they're comfortable reaching out to you. I know that for me, I have two young babies, and um, I'm not always accessible, but I try my hardest to be. Um, and always providing them with guidance and resources, sending them to clinics, getting them signed up for the level one clinic, level two clinic that's coming, getting your booster club, if you can, to raise enough money to send them up to the lacrosse convention because it's amazing and you learn so much in such a short period of time and you come back and you're inspired and you're ready for that season to start. You can't wait, you're like, it's like Christmas day for a coach. <laughs> so when I, um, they asked me to speak, I thought about what's the most important piece of coaching for me and it's not the X's and O's, no way do I ever claim to be a genius when it comes to strategy, okay? Um, but what I take pride in is culture. And my husband, one of his favorite quotes is, culture eats strategy for breakfast. And so I reached out to um, players of coaches that I look up to and my mentor, one of my mentors. So um, two coaches that I really look up to because I believe in what they do and they both just happen to also be successful is Kathy Reese, the Maryland coach. Um, she has four kids, the youngest is three, and she's super successful. She's going for her third straight national title this year. And every player that goes through her program loves her, loves her. And that's really hard to find. And so I reached out to my friend Alex Ost, who just made um, her third year appearance on Team USA. She made the Team USA roster. She's also the director of operations at Maryland, so she's coaching for them. She's amazing. You would be surprised how many people are willing to share knowledge with you because they love this sport. And she's one of them. Um, she comes down every summer and does a camp. It's actually at Lasseter. It's not benefiting Lasseter. So don't worry if you don't <laughs> want to send your kid there because it's Lasseter, it's not benefiting us. But she runs an awesome camp there in June. Um, but I asked her specifically, what did Kathy do to make your team succeed? And she said, Kathy always instills working hard for each other and to make the people around you better. Be your best self so your teammates can be the best version of them. She also stressed how we play lacrosse because it is fun and it is played best when everyone is working together and having fun. What makes it fun is competing with your teammates. You've worked so hard for a common goal. Achieving that goal is the best feeling. So that was from Alex. And then um, another friend, oh, I'm bummed it's cut off. But um, can you tighten it in a little bit? Do you know how to do that? If not, no worries. But. Um, Christy Black, she runs um, finish line camps. She um, played at Maryland and was a co-captain there under Kathy. And growing up, she 
played um, club lacrosse in high school for Kathy Reese's high school coach. So all she's known is that Maryland experience, and that is how she coaches. But I highlighted the things that I felt like were the most important. And she said that Kathy is always positive. They have a positive demeanor about their style. Kathy does not yell, she demands a lot, but in a way where you want to do well for her because you respect her so much. Um, she also said that the easiest way to have your players perform is to feed them with positive feedback and to praise them. Um, a couple cool quotes that she said she always remembered her saying was, the good thing about lacrosse is there's a second half. And so that was Kathy's way of saying, we stunk this first half, okay? But she never sat there at halftime and laid into it because that does nothing for their confidence. She would just say, we have a second half, okay? Um, and she would always tell her players, look, I know you're the best, you know you're the best, but show everybody else you're the best. And so that was her way of saying, you may not be the best, but she wants you to feel like you are, <coughs> which makes your confidence skyrocket. Um, and the last thing, if you watch a Maryland practice, Kathy is always pulling people aside one-on-one -on -one to give them positive feedback. She built your confidence more than anyone you will ever meet. If you watch the style that Maryland plays, it's not scared or intimidated. Um, they are the best, so they play with confidence and are always striving to play their best. So give them the confidence that they need to succeed. And again, treat people how you want to be treated. Um, so I love that. I love her coaching style. If you go up to the convention next weekend, go listen to Kathy speak. She's fantastic. Go introduce yourself. She's also super nice. Um, my other mentor is Mindy McCord, which a lot of people in here know pretty well. Um, I, a lot of coaches, Travis, Jay, um, every year from Centennial, now at Lasseter, I take my girls to their team camp. And um, at that team camp, you play together as a high school team. But more importantly, you get to work with an amazing group of coaches that are just willing to share all of their knowledge with you. Anything you want to know, they're going to tell it to you. She doesn't care if you run their exact offensive plays. You can, because, you know, every team scouts them. It's not like there's anything to hide. But um, Mindy is just an amazing person. I text her probably once a day with a question, um, and she always gets back to me. But she is the one that emphasized core values. And their number one core value, and I'll show you an example of Jacksonville's core values, but is to choose to be positive, okay? It's a choice. Um, and the quote that she has hanging in her office is, attitude is the mind's paintbrush. It can color any situation. And she makes her team memorize that. Um, she also says, I get to versus I have to, okay? It's all about wording when you're talking to your team that can turn that spin positive and make it motivating. So she joked and said, you know, I get to clean the kitty can, okay? Um, but each core value you have can help you build themes too. Exercises, talk about, reinforce, and focus on intentionality. Okay, so the steps to becoming a winning, effective, positive coach. I've never won a championship, or else that would be my picture, but um, <laughs> hopefully my dad. Okay, um, so create your core values, create a culture of excellence, and build your coaching philosophy off of your core values and culture of your program. So how do you do that? So um, what my assistant coach, who's back there and who's amazing, she and I put together this list of words, and we brought our entire team into um, the Trojan House and gave them this list, and every single player picked three to five words that they felt matched the culture of our community and our program. And then 
we took them back, and then you rank them. So the next step is once they're ranked, you bring your whole team together and you put them into small groups of three to five, and you give them the ranked words. And then you have them pick out three to five of those ranked words and come up with the definition, how it fits the culture, and then actions to create. And then you go around and you share, and you build off of these words, and you keep adding on to it and adding on to it. And then finally, you take the top 10 words and you come up with your definition and how it fits your culture. And you create your core values. And you emphasize those and you make them a part of your team and um, share them with your athletic director, share them with other teams, with your junior program. Have them incorporate that into their program as well. So when your girls go from the junior program to the high school level, they know what's expected of them. Um, this is Jacksonville's core values. I love them. Kind of just <coughs> them. And like I came up with them, but that's, that's not a good idea. Um, we choose to be positive. Team comes first. We focus on our best every time, all the time. We take responsibility and complete control of our physical preparation. There are no unimportant details. We are a team of grace. We show no weaknesses. And then the one I love the most is we mean no offense and we take no offense. Um, because as much as you want to be a positive coach, positive coaching doesn't happen all the time. You have to give feedback. You have to be able to criticize them and give them constructive criticism. So if you live with the motto, we mean no offense, take no offense, then they'll start to believe that. So when they get constructive criticism from you, they're able to you know, learn from it and move on. And then we're friends first, champion second, do the right thing for the right reason all the time. Um, this is my coaching philosophy. Um, you're welcome to read it, I'll email it to you, but I focus on building a culture of greatness or excellence. And um, it basically says that it's my job to put the right people in the right positions where they're humble and hungry and willing to work harder than everyone else. A culture of greatness dictates that each person use their gifts and strengths to serve the purpose and mission of our team. And um, that stems down to being positive. And as part of this process, I strive to develop positive leaders who share positive energy throughout the organization because positive energy flows from the top down. And, um, and it does flow from the top down. And it can either start from you or it can start from your administration. Um, at the current school that I'm at, our principal is amazing. He loves our program. He's a fantastic leader. The entire school looks up to him. Um, but that's not always the case. And so he does believe in my coaching philosophy, so it's a lot easier to emphasize. However, at my old school, even when I was 17, one and one, and went to the quarterfinals, I don't even think the principal knew we were in playoffs. And so it was my job to brush that off and to make the girls think that they're the most important people and they're all that matters in this world. Okay? Um, so we do a lot of emphasis on motivation and being positive. And you can see here it says no energy vampires. Uh, my team reads a book called The Energy Bus, which I'll share with you at the end. Um, we do book club throughout the fall semester in small groups with our entire team. Anybody who's interested in being on the team, I run the book clubs. My assistant coach helps to run the book clubs. We run them during lunches, when I have lunch or planning, and then also before school. Um, and so our theme for this season is no energy vampires.
and then we focused on our core values. So use your core values to help you mold the definition of your culture. What is it that you want to build? What is your coaching philosophy? Um, empower those around you. That's the first step, okay? Other people got to be on the same page as you. Uh, these are some great books. Uh, anything by John Gordon. Um, anything by John Gordon is awesome. Um, the Energy Bus is the book that we read. It's a really easy read. All of his books are really, really easy. Um, and they're addicting. You'll read it in one or two nights. Um, and let's see, You Win in the Locker Room First. That's a great book about culture. Um, let's see. And all of these, John C. Maxwell, I'm sure most of you have heard of him. He's great. Um, I did that with my seniors last year. Um, it's not as engaging as John Gordon. Um, but so empower people. Have book club for your team and your coaches. Make your coaches read all the books that you make your players read. Um, here is the bus ticket. We had our parent meeting for anybody interested in playing two nights ago. And everybody who came in, I handed them a bus ticket. And on the front of the bus ticket, they have to write their name and the date. And then on the back are the energy bus rules. And this includes parents as well. Okay? If parents aren't positive, then they're not going to be a part of our organization. Okay? You're like, how are you going to do that? Well, the great thing about high school, and I really do feel bad for middle school and youth coaches that have difficult parents, but you can put in a parent contract. But in high school, we have resource officers. So we can say, would you mind moving that parent? And they'll say, sure. Move them as far away as you can. But, you know, if the parent knows what you expect out of them, okay, it's going to create a culture where the other parents around will say, hey, don't do that, okay, shh, go over there if you want to yell, okay? Um, and my players joke with me, especially in my old school, because each kid that I've had only had two, but I kind of get softer and nicer. And trust me, years ago, only a couple years ago, um, I was a yeller, and I definitely got a few cards. Um, I learned the hard way, okay? Now, one of my own coaches, he's one of the men that, men that gave me many of my cards in my day. But, um, yeah, so when, we, when I first joined the Lassiter team, we hugged it out. Um, but you, sometimes you got to learn the hard way. And um, the day that I learned the hard way, Centennial was playing Lassiter, and we were 17 and 1. It was my dream team. I had them since we were freshmen. The only tie we had was Walton. And we were really proud of ourselves. And um, we went into that game, you know, knowing that we were, we were outsized and we were the underdog. But the first draw went up and we lost possession. And I lost it on the <laughs> sideline. And I turned into an energy vampire. And my players took my energy and went with it. And we got destroyed, destroyed. And I got a card after the game. I had to sit out the first two games of the next season. It was rough. But never again, never again. Now I just smile and wave. That's what I tell my girls, <laughs> smile and wave. Okay. Um, so how do I pick my captains? I picked this up at the convention long time ago, actually from Forrest Stillwell, who um, used to coach at Holy Innocence. I think he's now at Georgia. Uh, UConn. UConn, yeah, UConn. But um, he presented, and he was like, Angela, I don't think there's going to be anybody coming to watch me. You know, he's still a high school coach presenting at the U.S. convention. So I was like, I'll come, Forrest. I'll come support you. But actually, it was one of the best things I ever learned, and it was how to how to pick my captain. So it's the coach's job to put the right people in the right position who are humble and hungry and able to lead. Good leaders are an extension of you. Um, they know your plan, your voice, your ear, and they're there when you're not around. 
So this book is a great reference when you're choosing captains. And um, the importance of effective leaders, great student leadership, it helps your success as a coach, it helps your sanity, and it gives you satisfaction and success. Okay? Um, the effective leaders must have commitment, confidence, composure, and character. They ensure high standards, build chemistry, manage the pulse, and my favorite, your best defense against stupidity. Okay. Uh, so typically, okay, and I was this typical person before doing this and learning about this. Um, typically, 25% of coaches just will pick your my two favorite players, you can be captain. Um, you're the two best players, you can be captain. Uh, the players will vote, athletes will nominate them, coach makes a final choice. Some people don't have captains at all, which is fine, I don't give out awards. So, um, and then all seniors or team council will pick them. Um, how many captains should you choose? That's up to you. I've had as many as five before, I've had as little as one. Um, when the best time to do it is the end of the season, or if you're new in the process, I always wait until after the first scrimmage because I want to see how my girls are going to react in our first scrimmage. And our first scrimmage is a tough game. It's not a piece of cake. Um, so I want to see how they compose themselves. So it's a three-part process. There's a player application, a player self-evaluation, and then the team player evaluation. So every person who wants to be a captain, part one, they have to apply. They have to write an essay, they have to type it up, and they have to turn it in. Part two is every single person on the team evaluates themselves. Okay, so they evaluate themselves on being a leader by example, commitment, confidence, composure, character. And some of them are just comical because they'll come back and they'll all be the hardest worker on the team. And you're like, I'm pretty sure that you weren't at practice for like the past week. <laughs> <laughs> this is really out of But um, so it's really good to see, you know, how they feel about themselves, whether they have confidence, whether they feel like they're able to lead. And then um, a vocal leader, okay, the enforcer, the team builder, the refocuser, the confidence builder, and the servant. Um, and then it gives you a way to rank them so you can kind of have, you know, an idea when you're putting them in a spreadsheet if you're as crazy as I am and I do that. Um, and then the third part, which is really, really interesting, and I love it, is the top three. And the rules you give out, I give out a roster, so everybody has everybody's name on the team. And then every person, you can only list three people per category. You don't rank them, there's no rank, it's not like one, two, and three, it's just three people who you feel like share, um, you know, are the hardest worker on the team. I'll show you in a second, okay? And you do not have them write their name on it. And finally, you tell them, if you feel like you're that person, you can write your name down as well, okay? Um, so, okay. So this is the sheet. Um, top three teammates who have the strongest work ethic, and they'll write down three people. Sometimes there'll be nothing written down, okay? If your one of your players feels like nobody has strong work ethic, they're all just out there for fun you might have a lot of blanks. And that's fine. It's going to open your eyes to what you need to work on. Um, who you have the most confidence in. Who's the most mentally tough? Who do you trust the most? Um, the top three teammates who care about the team and their teammates the most. Who can build the most confidence in you? Um, who is the best at holding your team accountable on and off the field? Okay, so you don't want the girl who on the field is amazing, but off the field she's partying, drinking, and, you know, the talk of social media. Um, your top three teammates who you have the most respect for, best attitude for lacrosse, have the most positive relationships with players, 
and a good relationship with the coaching staff. And then you can put them all into this spreadsheet. And what you do is you do it over time. So you can see when your freshmen come in, their leadership as it grows for over four years. So this is 2013, 2014, 2015. Same growth. So you can see them as they grow. And then I always do red as like an area of concern. You know, why is this person the most mentally tough and have the strongest work ethic, but has a really bad attitude? Okay, or um, has zero relations with their teammates? That's probably not someone that you want to put in a leadership role. Because a lot of times as coaches, we see those players who kind of kiss our butt and are always showing off for us. And a lot of times those are the kids that are just thrown into the captain role because they're, you know, they please you when you're at practice. But off the field, nobody looks up to them. And you want to avoid that. And it can be hard to pick captains. Last year was my first year at Lassiter. My girls were like, when are we going to have captains? I'm like, when you're ready. Okay, when I'm ready. Okay, because I don't know you well enough yet um, to make that decision. And I don't want to pick the wrong leaders. Because, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Now what? Tips for your new captain. So these are just some ideas, you know, to share with your captains. Make sure they know your expectations of them. And if they don't live up to them, make sure that you penalize them. Um, and again, you know, make sure that they understand what these terms mean, okay? Their responsibilities. Every coach has different responsibilities that they have for their captains, but have them sign a contract saying, I promise to lead and do these things. I promise to, in the summer, take charge of practices or in the fall run run team practices, okay? Um, your parent contract. Make sure that your parents are aware of your expectations, okay? Um, this is my parent contract. It gets bigger and bigger and bigger. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, a few things that you want to emphasize are um, commit to building a culture of excellence, which is my philosophy. Be supportive of your child. Ask your child about their experience if you can't come to their game. Show interest. Um, be a positive role model by displaying good sportsmanship. Okay? Let your child set their own goals. Um, let the coach coach. Okay? Refrain from giving your child advice when she is playing. Know that the coaches make mistakes, but they're working hard for the success of the team and of that um, individual. Also, I don't let my parents email me directly unless it's a super issue like their kids